guys, this is Jenny with the Crafters Workshop. Today I'm going to share a art journal spread that I created using lots of the different mediums and paints and um, some of the newer stencils. So real quickly I'm going to go through some of these or the mediums that I use. I don't actually use that Mer Mercosite silver um, paste. I do use the gold. I use these, a lot of these little pieces of um, altered art. Um, Printouts that I have. I use these two small six by six stencils, and a piece of this left over. It's one of the gold foil. Um, it's the gold foil over the uh, mixed media um, foam adhesive sheet that's from Thermal Web and Rebecca Meyer. These are two of the other stencils I use. Um, and this large one here, I use a piece of too. I tried to go with um, a lot of circular theme things, but I wanted it to be pretty loose and organic. I don't end up using that floral one and just use little bits and pieces of that other um, sort of grungy one. Um, this is my art journal spread that I've already got um, primed with uh, clear gesso and taped the spine, and so I am ready to begin with uh, my background. Um, I'm not going to talk through all of this, I don't believe, but uh, one of the best ways I find if I don't have a complete, you know, um, plan in my head of what I plan to do is to just kind of get a base layer down of color that helps me figure out what direction I'm going to go to with. Um, I, I actually put down wax paper in between my sheets so that the paint and water doesn't end up seeping into the other pages of my journal. Um, so I just went down and layered a lot of that those gelatos together and added lots of water and just kind of um, really just let it kind of blend all together and create this um, sort of pale yellowy um, peach background. And that really was a little bit brighter than I had planned so I just take some white gesso and a baby wipe which is nice because it kind of mutes it down and did another wash sort of on top of it kind of whitewash it and then um, just picked up some of that white paint with a paper towel and um, so that's kind of got the base layer I'm going to have and I had really wanted to mix like a kind of a, a mossy green color um, to contrast that so I used a lot of the heavy body acrylics and kept mixing and mixing until I got the kind of kind of the color that I had wanted um, I was trying to match some of the browns and and kind of muted colors of these altered art pages um, these were left over from a, pro a team up project that we did with um, the crafters workshop and altered art and love this sort of postage look post office you know postage stamp look and the the old um, text and that sort of vintage feel. So that's why I um, decided to do that and I pretty much cover the majority of the background in a lot of these pieces that I had torn and cut some of and um, layer them on top of it. I adhere them with the uh, mixed media gel medium and um, it is uh, great for this. It's like a Mod Podge but I think it's better quality and um, this is actually the gloss finish um, and what's great about it is it because it kind of seals it down it ends up giving you a really nice even base to paint on top of um, which I do later on so uh, I kind of just keep on gluing this down until I'm satisfied that I've got a good enough background to let some of those pieces peek through and then let some of the paint peek through and um, then I let that dry for a while and then we'll start on um, the next phase um, which is to add some of this paint with um, some of the uh, stencils here I'm just going to dry it a little bit with my heat tool um, or a lot with my heat tool <laughs> Uh, I constantly, when I do, do use that, I constantly move it around and, and heat it a lot from the back too so it doesn't warp the pages too much or end up melting the, um, the matte gel. So once I've got that pretty, um, pretty dry, I'm going to take this um, stencil, it's the, it's the 12 by 12 and I believe it's the micro dots 
no, no, it's the connected dots, the doodling template for connected dots. And I just used the white, um, light and fluffy paste first and um, added that around. Then I used my finger and these little tiny um, micro dots in the six by six and that paint and just kind of add it in several different spots. Um, I had planned to kind of go back and paint over the, or use it as a resist over that um, light and fluffy modeling paste. That's why I kept it white. Okay, you can see now I've gone through a lot of, um, a lot of different layers of just adding some distress ink to the edges and really um, deepening up the color there. Um, now I'm going to use this uh, 12 by 12 stencil. It's called Thoughtful Bird. And I only wanted to use that circle. I really wanted to add a space that would be the focal point of where I was going to draw my figure. And um, that's really the only thing I knew I was going to do was I wanted to have this figure and um, I wanted to give her these little wings made from that leftover piece of um, foiled adhesive. So I um, sketch that out and I kind of then I kind of sketch out what the, the wings I think should be the size wise based on where I think my little girl is going to be sketched and then um, I cut those out and just kind of put them off to the side to um, wait until I'm ready to use those. So that's pretty much the basis for the size of ev how everything else comes together. And I knew I wanted to keep it off center and keep it kind of straddling the line of the, the seam of the pages and, and make it a little bit more dynamic by not making it so um, central on one side or the other. So this is where I start to add some just white acrylic paint as the base for the girl. And then I use um, several other different acrylic paints and then some of the white heavy body acrylic paint from the crafters workshop to add a flesh color to um, my girl and it's kind of interesting going back and looking at the process and how you build up paints and colors and skin tone and things that when you look at it at the end it's hard to believe it looked like this because it looks kind of you know weird and and a little bit odd and um, Anyway, so I had planned on having her hold something, so that's why I kind of paint around that. I um, am just going to let you listen to some music and watch the rest of this. There's a, a lot of sort of going back and forth and back and forth with the, um, the painting of this girl. And then I do add more stencils and um, some more layers at the end. So I'm going to let you listen to some music and watch what I come up with here, and then I'll be back to... Um, talk at the end of the video.
I'm back here towards the end and um, you can see the process that I went through and the only thing I was really disappointed with this um, spread was honestly was the little butterfly I really wanted to use one that was stenciled and uh, couldn't I couldn't feel like I could quite get it to pop out enough um, but anyway I, I really like the way it turned out and it was uh, a super fun project to do I hope you enjoyed watching it. You can see the uh, stills here in a minute, the close-ups, and then the final product at the end. There will be a complete listing below the, um, the video to show you the links and all the supplies used. Um, be sure to go to thecraftersworkshop.com and to visit the blog as well. Thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll see you soon. Bye.